Hi, I'm Greg Ferenstein. I'm the policy writer at TechCrunch, and we are joined by Anne Wachecki, mm -hmm. uh, founder of 23andMe. There's two subjects that I wanted to touch on. Mm -hmm. uh, when you first started your keynote, you talked about uh -huh. all the health problems in America, obesity. Um, and so it, it, it strikes me that you think that genetic testing really can have a very, very big impact on America's health. Mm -hmm. So what is the dream? I mean, what, what, what's the realistic dream that you're aiming for? Mm -hmm. so, um, so two things. One, I think that if consumers were more empowered, they would actually take more responsibility for their health. And I think that's actually one of the things that you actually see in this nature paper that Robert Greene wrote is that um, people get their genetic data and then half of them are showing up at their doctor's offices saying, tell me what I can do and tell me how I can prevent disease. And so what's, what's amazing about that is it's sort of that eureka moment for a lot of individuals where they genuinely want to change their behavior. So if I can, if, you know, majority of chronic illnesses in this country are preventable. So if I can actually get you to come into the office at some point and actually take it seriously that you want to change your behavior, I do think that you could have a long-term impact on healthcare in this country. So I also think that just like having that ownership, like preventing um, potential complications, like I gave the example of the factor two, factor five mm -hmm. of, you know, people who are at risk for blood clots. So if you can go into a surgery and potentially prevent a complication, I think that's actually going to make you much happier and it's going to save money for the system. So genetics isn't going to do everything, but I do think it will be a significant driver for actually making the entire system more efficient. As 23andMe begins to open up to other app developers and other software, um, what do you hope that, gen I mean, what's the long-term dream that genetic information can do for people's health? Well, I think genetic information, one, I think it puts you in the driver's seat, okay. which I think is one of the most important issues for healthcare. For if you really want to change healthcare, like you actually have to start to control the decision-making process rather than your insurance company and rather than your physician. So I think that's one of the most important things. Two, I really do believe that a big database of genetic information in your medical records is going to help you know, like one, what is it that you want to prevent? And two, how can I make care more efficient? So for instance, if you have Crohn's disease and the therapies for Crohn's are thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year, but they only really work in about a third of the population. So should you take that very expensive medication or not? So if I can understand the genetics of that and understand, okay, this is the population that we know it's really going to work for, well, then it's, yeah, of course, it's worth the expense, and you should definitely be taking it. But so I think, I believe that there's actually a lot of inefficiencies in the system right now about, you know, how we're actually, you know, providing the care and the fact that a lot of it is just wasted because we know that it's not going to work on you. Um. Now you're talking about the, the kind of the big data thing. I mean, mm -hmm. assuming you get enough of people's genome, you're going to be able to understand mm -hmm. information. That gets into the creepy factor. Why should the American public not be freaked out about giving all that sensitive information to a private company? Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, one, we try to be very transparent about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the best thing I can, I can do is, is be transparent with customers and enable customers to, to leave at any point. So um, we want to provide a very useful service to people so that they can understand their genetic information. And we also want to provide a platform for people to be able to aggregate and, or aggregate and find each other and actually really see if we can crowdsource solutions. And 23andMe does want to partner with the pharma world and the biotech world because those are the people who are developing therapies. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> for readers unfamiliar, uh, the FDA uh, sent a letter to 23andMe, and as a result, they have chosen to uh, not continue a lot of the health diagnoses that they were doing. I'm correctly describing this. Mm -hmm. um, and even for people who already got it, they limited the number that they now show those customers related to cancers and other genetic diseases. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we actually provide everything, everything that you got before November 22nd, you still get. Okay. We're just not updating it anymore. Updating it and new, pay and new customers do new not. New customers are not, are not getting health reports. So I think 23andMe's position was mm -hmm. you're just giving information and then people can go to a doctor. Right. Well, regulators are clearly afraid that information isn't enough. People can freak out, they can make irrational decisions, they can make stupid decisions. If mm -hmm. they get a false negative, they may not take any action at all. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it's misguided to regulate companies mm -hmm. based on the idea that people could make uninformed decisions? I think that there's a point to regulating because I think that there was there were snake oil companies. Like one of the first companies I ever went to see in a genetic testing space um, told me specifically that if I took these vitamins, I could change my DNA. 
and which was clearly not true. You cannot change your DNA. Your DNA is, is set. So, um, so yes, there is, there's a regulatory world that should come, like the regulation makes sense to make sure that there's at least a standard bar. Um, I do firmly believe though, is that it is your, in all aspects of healthcare, if you want to get information about yourself, you should have that ability. I spoke to a couple of experts, and I'm sure mm -hmm. you, you, you understand them, that they are very worried that people don't necessarily understand genetic information, and there's a real concern that uninformed consumers will make irrational decisions based on some of the probabilities that you present. Do you not share that fear? Um, so, a um, couple things. So first off, 23andMe tries to provide enough context for individuals so that they can start to make sense of that information. Um, secondly, as we really try to emphasize to people is that they need to partner with their physician or a genetic counselor to take that next step. So, um, so for instance, if, if you want to do something that is more um, radical, you want to do an intervention, that is going to require the assistance of a physician. You want to get a colonoscopy, you want to get a mammogram, that requires you going to the physician and actually making a case to the physician as to why you need to do this. And so, Then why not just offer it through doctors? I know this is one of the proposals being floated. Yeah, so I think the problem with offering it just through physicians is then it creates another bottleneck. What's the future of genetic testing? Um, athleticism, nutrition, I know, mm -hmm. I mean, you're starting to be kind of a platform where other people can use mm -hmm. uh, your genetic test and your data. What, like, next two, five years, what are you excited about? Where's the field going? I think it's unbelievably exciting how, like one, how inexpensive genetic testing is becoming. Um, but how much it's actually really being adopted by the medical establishment. I know there are some companies that are partnering with you. If you could describe one or yeah. maybe one or two that you're like super excited about, you're like, mm -hmm. people can really use this. Well, we have an API. One of the things I'm most excited about is saying, is enabling anyone in the world who has an idea to leverage the 23andMe API to actually build applications that they want. Mm. So for instance, there's a group at Harvard that actually has built this whole application where they pull the patient's data um, in from us to the Harvard medical records, which is super interesting because it enables them that they don't have to go and retest someone. They can like come and they can pull it in and, and you know if it's something that's serious, they find that you have cystic fibrosis, they'll probably retest you for that. Um, but, but it's a way for them to actually pull in data and it's a screen. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think that's all of our questions. Thank you so much that's for good. joining us. Yeah, nice to see you.